Warning, read and follow all labels and the owner's manual. You work hard, so does your Miller Respiratory Protection. Learn how to keep it that way for years to come. Hi, I'm Brian, and I'm here to tell you about the proper care and use of your Miller Powered Air Purifying Respirator, or PAPR, as I'll refer to it throughout this video. Before we begin, let's talk a little bit about weld fume. The ACGIH, who sets the threshold limit value, or TLV, this refers to the airborne concentrations of chemical substances and represents conditions under which it is believed that nearly all workers may be repeatedly exposed on a daily basis over a working lifetime without adverse effects. The other organization is OSHA, who sets the permissible exposure limit, or PEL, on each particulate. This is the enforceable regulatory limit on the amount or concentration of a substance that a worker may be exposed to. OSHA utilizes a hierarchy of controls. When implementing controls to make your work environment compliant, it's important to start at the top of the hierarchy. If taking action at this level doesn't reduce exposure levels enough, continue to the next step. At the top of the hierarchy, we have process modification substitution, which eliminates the exposure before it can even occur. This is considered the most effective control method. Next is engineering controls, which entails a physical change to the workspace, such as ventilation. Then we have work practice controls, which involve processes where workers do something to avoid overexposure, such as body positioning. And finally, personal protective equipment, which requires that workers wear something to prevent overexposure. This is where respiratory protection comes in. Your personal safety relies upon the proper use and care of your PAPR. The fit of your PAPR is key, and proper care of your equipment can keep it working effectively. In the end, the quality of your work and your protection relies upon it. Now let's get to know a little bit more about the care and use of your PAPR system. OSHA classifies PAPRs as loose-fitting respirators, which means fit testing is not required. PAPRs have a NIOSH certification of 42 CFR Part 84 and an assigned protection factor of 25. The purpose of a PAPR is to filter solid dust particles, metal fumes, and mist from your breathing zone. Some secondary benefits include eye protection and heat stress relief. Your PAPR system should contain the following components. The head assembly, which could be a respiratory version of the hard hat, T94i, or T94 helmet. This includes your helmet, headgear, and a flame-resistant head seal. The blower unit with padded belt, HEPA filter, pre-filters, and a spark guard. The breathing tube with a flame-resistant cover, shoulder straps, lithium-ion batteries and battery charger, a flow meter, all in a job site tool bag. Before each use, be sure to check the following. Inspect the helmet and head seal for any damages, Ensure that the front lens holder is locked into position. Test the lens assembly battery by turning on the helmet. Turn on the blower and check that air is being supplied to the head assembly. If the cover lens or battery needs replacing, we'll cover how to do that later in this video. When wearing your headgear, get in the habit of regularly checking the fit. Check the tightness of your headgear by adjusting the knob on the back of the helmet. Turn to the left or the right until you reach the desired fit. Check the helmet tilt angle by repositioning the lift control arm to the best fitting slot. Check the balance and stability by adjusting your headgear depth. Check the distance between your face and the helmet lens. To adjust, press the black tab on the top and bottom of the pivot point and use your other hand to slide the headgear forward and backwards. Make sure to set each side equally. There are two cover lenses on your helmet an outside lens and inside lens. Here are the steps if you need to change either of these. To replace the outside cover lens, first remove the cover lens holder. Do this by pulling on the four points on either side of the helmet. This then gives you access to the outside cover lens. To remove that, use the top center indentation in the helmet to pull and release the cover lens from the head assembly. You now have access to the lens assembly, which gives you access to the inside cover lens. 
To make it easier to change the inside cover lens, remove the lens assembly from the helmet by pushing up on the tab on the top center and giving the lens a slight push from inside the helmet. On the back side of the lens is where you will find the inside cover lens. To remove, use the top center indentation to slightly slide the inside cover lens from the helmet. Replace by sliding the new lens back into the lens assembly and then replace the lens assembly back into the helmet. Replace the outside cover lens by sliding the tabs into either side of the helmet and replace your cover lens holder. Your helmet is now ready for use. If the battery on your helmet lens needs replacing, follow these steps. Remove the cover lens holder and cover lens from the head assembly, then remove the lens from the helmet. From there, you have access to the battery tray. Slide out of the lens assembly and replace with a CR2450 lithium battery. Reinstall the battery into the holder and the tray into the lens assembly. From there, reinstall the lens into the helmet and replace your cover lens and cover lens holder. Now let's walk through a few of the controls on the helmet lens. This lens features an auto on and auto off, along with a grind mode and low battery light. The mode selection allows you to adjust between weld, which gives you shade control from eight to 13 in half shade increments, cut, which changes from shades five to seven, grind, which is set at a light state of three, and X mode, which again allows you to adjust between shades eight and 13, just like weld mode. X mode though, darkens based on the arc's electromagnetic field, not the brightness. It's ideal in outdoor and low amp TIG applications or for out of position welds. Nearby welding may affect X mode if they're within a 12 foot radius. The variable shade adjustment can be done through the plus and minus on the right side of the lens. A few of the other features in this lens are delay and sensitivity. To adjust these, hit the adjust button. The delay is how long the lens will stay dark after the welding is complete. And sensitivity adjusts how quickly the lens darkens when the weld is started. This lens also features InfoTrack 2.0, which contains a clock with alarm, the arc time, and arc count. Now let's check your filter assembly. First, assure that the spark guard, pre-filter, and HEPA filters are undamaged and installed properly, and that the filter door is completely closed. Filters need to be replaced when they're dirty or damaged. Never try to wash or blow them out. To change the filter, follow these steps. First, insert the spark guard into the filter cover. Then, insert the pre-filter on top of the spark guard and finally, insert the HEPA filter on top of the pre-filter. From there, you can then insert the filter cover into the blower motor. First, slide the tabs in and then click the cover closed. A good rule of thumb is to change the pre-filter at the same time of a cover lens or as needed. Change your HEPA filter as a decrease in normal battery life is noticed or as needed. Check the airflow level using the flow meter to ensure airflow is above 170 liters per minute. To do this, disconnect the breathing tube from the head assembly. Then, insert the flow meter into the breathing tube. Verify that the breathing tube is straight and untwisted and that the flow meter is in an upright position. From there, you can start the blower. Airflow is adequate if the flow meter ball moves above the min mark. If the flow meter ball is below the min mark, do not use the respirator. 
Here are a few troubleshooting tips when checking your airflow. Check the battery to make sure it has enough charge. There should be more than one bar of charge and no alarm sounding. Ensure the spark guard is clean, and if airflow is still too low, change your pre-filter and retest. If airflow is still low, change the HEPA filter and retest. If airflow is still not adequate, it's time for a new blower unit as this may be a mechanical issue. You'll also want to make sure the airflow alarms are in proper working order. To do this, disconnect the blower tube from the head assembly. Block the airflow by placing your hand over the breathing tube until the alarm sounds and the blower vibrates. This will take about 15 to 20 seconds. If alarm does not function, do not use the respirator. The battery should be fully charged and properly inserted into the unit. To insert the battery, slide the battery into the blower until the battery snaps into position. To remove it, push the battery unlock button and pull the battery out of the blower. If your battery isn't charged, follow these steps. Connect the charger cord to the battery terminal. Then connect the charger to the 120 volt AC receptacle. The charger's light will turn red when the battery is charging and green once it is fully charged. The battery will stop charging when the unit is fully charged. This typically takes about three hours. The battery should last four to five hours on high speed and six to eight hours on low. Things that can impact the life of your battery include particulate concentration, the filter, the age of your battery, and your altitude. Next, let's take a look at the breathing tube. Give it a good inspection and replace if it's damaged or the inside of the tube is dirty. Push the breathing tube connector onto the head assembly. Then connect the other end to the blower unit. This is done by aligning the pins and turning clockwise to tighten. Check the belt assembly and make sure it is in good condition. If you see any noticeable holes, burns, or tears, it is time to be replaced. Be sure to inspect the belt pad and the shoulder straps as well. The unit is powered by using the on-off button. Note there is also a danger indicator and alarm light. This is to alert you if you have a low battery power, reduced airflow due to a dirty filter, a blocked breathing tube, or other issues. There is also a battery level indicator. The blower speed control can switch from low to high. To start the blower, press the on button for one to two seconds. During startup, the danger indicator alarms will flash and sound and the unit will vibrate momentarily. The blower always starts on low speed. To switch to high speed, push the on button again. To stop the blower, press the off button for two to three seconds until the blower stops. Proper fit of your papper system will maximize comfort for all day wear. Slide the shoulder straps over your shoulders and fasten the belt around your waist. Adjust the straps and belt to a snug but comfortable fit. Put on the head assembly and adjust the headgear to fit snugly. Push the breathing tube connector onto the head assembly, then tighten the head seal drawstring to establish a tight seal around your neck. You're now ready to use your papper. Just as important as a proper fit, maintaining your system will keep it running at peak performance for years to come. For best results, wipe down your equipment with a soft cloth and a mild soap water solution. Let it air dry. Never use solvents or abrasive cleaning solutions to clean the respirator. Keep water and other fluids out of the blower assembly. When not in use, it's best to store it in the job site tool bag. You owe it to yourself to be sure that your powered air purifying respirator is in optimal working order. Every welding environment is different and needs to be evaluated by a qualified industrial hygienist to determine the appropriate course of action for fume controls. For more information, visit MillerWelds.com.